Hello everyone and welcome to Cinderful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe, and most of all, I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today's video is a Black Library review. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at one of the many publications brought out by Black Library and giving you our thoughts on the book audio drama whatever it happens to be now i will say that we will try to keep this review to as spoiler free as possible though there will obviously be points where we talk about things happening in the book we will try to keep away from saying any of the major plot points so you can go and read this book for yourself we'll just give you our thoughts on whether or not we think it is something you may be interested in so we'll use this video to instruct you on maybe is this sort of going to be a book that you would like to see with that all said and out the way let's get cracking on let's talk a little bit about the book that we have reviewed this time in today's Black Library review, we're going to be checking out Death Watch Shadowbreaker by Steve Parker. This one is narrated by Andrew Winker on the audio version. As always, I like to listen to the audios while I'm doing some other hobby, doing some editing work or stuff like that. Uh, now, Death Watch Shadowbreaker is the second novel for Death Watch. It's the only one I could find that was on Audible. I couldn't find the original, but I do remember reading it about Talon Squad, which we'll get into in just a sec, are the main characters of the story. Um, I really love Death Watch. Death Watch RPG was my whole introduction into role-playing games. I, think. I thought it was a regular Warhammer book, picked up the Death Watch RPG book from Fantasy Flight Games, and... Well, that got me into things like Dungeons and Dragons and all that. A weird sort of entry point, but I really like Death Watch. They've always been something I've been super interested in. I remember them back in like 4th edition 40k, coming out in White Dwarf with the Kill Team rules. was super awesome. I love the idea of them. Uh, so let's get talking about this book. And so, the story. The Death Watch are the elite of the elite. Small teams of Space Marines handpicked for special missions that require the utmost courage and cunning. Now recovered from the injury sustained on the previous mission, Codicia Karras must lead Talon Squad in the hunt for the missing Inquisitor. Their only clue is the name of an Imperial planet that has been taken over by the Tau. Is the missing Inquisitor alive or dead? Worse still, has she gone rogue, jeopardizing one of the Inquisition's most secret projects? Karras must lead his team against a whole planet of hostile tower and survive the deadly internal politics of the Inquisition to succeed in his mission code named Shadowbreaker. So straight away, uh, like we're going on a story that's after the things that have happened in the first Death Watch story. Uh, I will say that you probably don't need to read the first story to get an awful lot of an idea. There are very, very few things I think that you need to understand in this. It does a good job of summarizing at the start what's happened uh, in the previous book. So this could be really taken as a standalone novel quite well. And so what is this story's purpose? This story, once again, like the previous one, shows us how Death Watch kill teams work, how these space marines from such different cultures can come together and work so well together. Um, what this does really well too is the first book is showing, you know, the kill team as it's formed. They're now, you know, a much more experienced and closer knit group of uh, space marines. So... This really does show us how a more strongly bonded team functions, you know. There's a lot less sort of um, bickering in that and how all these Space Marines have gelled a lot better. Now, we also get a lot more Inquisitor and Space Marine interaction in this than the previous title as well, as an Inquisitor actually joins them on the main mission. So there's some really cool looks at that sort of uh, relationship between, you know, Space Marine and Inquisitor in this book as well. And so our main character, once again, is Karas, the Codicia of the Death Spectres. Now, this is a little bit different, you know. Normally, uh, there are Ultramarines leading a lot of the kill teams, uh, or, you know, first founding chapters. So finding a second founding chapter and leading the kill team is something a little different, especially since there is both an Imperial Fist and an Ultramarine in his kill team, which is really cool. There's also a Raven Guard in there, a Exorcist as well, and a Lamenter. Uh, rounding out the kill team. Now, I won't say too much about them because it's quite interesting sort of learning and reading about all of them. But Karas is, you know, a Codicia of the Death Spectres who are a Space Marine chapter that is tasked with keeping the Valvar Gessi away from the rest of the galaxy, keeping Tyranids away from them. So they're really experienced at fighting Tyranids and they're also really powerful psychers as well. He's a Codicia, but he's probably on the level of power-wise with many other chief librarians throughout the galaxy. And so what changes about our main character over the course of the story? And I don't think too much changes about him other than him 
learning maybe a little bit more of the extent of his powers because he's fighting foes that uh, maybe using stuff against him that are nullifying his powers. He learns to be more of a general space marine in this. But also, um, he learns that sort of place of Space Marine and Inquisitor and learns more about the uh, forces of the Death Watch and indeed the Auto Xenos as well, which is really cool throughout the story. What does this book do? Well, for me, it really, I think, uh, makes, you know, the Death Watch concept and sure it shows it in its best light. It's such a fun concept for Space Marines. The book really does take me back to playing those Death Watch RPG games, uh, for which I was a DM most of the time, but still ton of fun. Like, it shows all the brotherhood, all the camaraderie, all the jokes, all the sort of snide remarks, all the competitiveness within a kill team. Um, this has definitely reignited my want to maybe even run Death Watch RPG on the channel at some point. If that's something you'd like to see, let us know down in the comments below. Maybe we'll run Death Watch RPG on the channel. Um, but this, yeah, I think the best thing you can say about this book is it makes you feel like you're in someone's game of the Death Watch RPG. And so that does bring me, who is this book for? Like I said, if you have played the Death Watch RPG, or you're a fan of the Auto Xenos and Death Watch in general, this book is for you. It really does feel like you've joined someone's game of the RPG. Um, I will say the combat in this is rather interesting as well. There's not a lot of, you know, straight up fights. There's a lot of sort of uh, stealth ops and, you know, sneaking around and more tactical sort of fighting going on. It's not just Space Marine shoots Bolter and wins. There's a lot more to many of the fights and that break out that are, you know, quite consistent within the book you're playing you know well rather you're reading about a space marine uh, and space marines meant to go do covert operations and go you know eliminate targets you get what you get in this book and so in summary this is fun while maybe it was a little slow to start definitely picks up about a third of the way into the story though and has some really great little twists and some underlying plots within it Definitely some also sad and emotional moments that see, you know, some uh, rather heart-tugging parts within it. I thought this was good. Like, for me, this was a solid 5 out of 10 story. You know, good, enjoyable. I don't think there's much more I can say about it. If you've picked this up and you've read this, or indeed the prequel to it, let us know what you thought down in the comments below. And so that is the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and drop a comment letting us know what you enjoyed about the video down in the comments below. If you'd like to come chat more with me and other members of our little community here at Sinful Gaming, you can do so by joining our Discord server down in the video's description. Also down in the video's description are the best ways to help support the channel. If you want to do so, you can go and buy some merch either at our Teespring store or from our Kofi again, or you can join Patreon or YouTube members. Our YouTube members, when we're on live streams, will get some cool little emojis that they can only use. Now, as a special thanks to, to all our Patreons and YouTube members, we'd like to give a shout out to them. So thank you to our Patreons, Christian Weir, Siren, Kenny Lower, Out on Shot First, Andrew Bowen, Nathan T, The Rising Ape, Cure Dynamic, Anthony B, JJ Austrian, Average Wargamer, Domir, Mark Harvey, James Cater, Derek Bloobs, Benjamin Suarez, and Red Martin. And a special thank you to our YouTube members as well, Green Roots Gaming, Kenton Young, Ronya, Lock Lorik, The Johnny84, David Ellsworth, Wolfric Nick, Broken Chef, Ariana Edwards, Revenar, Pink Nico Fire, Robin Mankiller, Monty's Tabletop Terrain, John Castle, Davis Wire, and James South. Lastly, a special thank you to Lady Witch Fox R, who does all the amazing artwork for the channel you see here. And that's it, though. Thank you once again for watching. Stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the grey. Ciao for now.